February 24, Vladimir Putin shattered peace in Europe by launching a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. This is downtown, completely destroyed. Despite the carnage, Putin remains determined to rebuild the Soviet Empire and may already be looking beyond Ukraine. As fighting intensifies and casualties rise, the whole world is wondering just how far Putin will go. Bordering Ukraine is the Republic of Moldova, Europe's poorest country. In earshot of the bombs falling, this tiny nation finds itself in a dangerous position. The former Soviet state is frighteningly close to the port city of Odessa, which is bracing for attack. Many of Moldova's 2.5 million citizens fear that if Ukraine falls, Russia will come for them next. We've come to Palanka, which is one of Moldova's southernmost border crossings with Ukraine. There's a constant stream of people here, mainly young children, women, older people and they're all fleeing from towns and cities that are under a constant Russian bombardment and attack not much more than a couple of hours drive from this point here. Bombili ночью, но мы держимся, в городе никого нету. Наши мальчики там нас охраняют, а мы уже по-старчески дам сюда. Уже держалась до последнего, а уже после того не первый раз уже обстреляли, то конечно надо ехать. To date, more than 350,000 Ukrainians have fled into Moldova. The country has taken in more refugees per capita than any other nation and has promised to keep its border open. How does it feel now you've got you and your family into Moldova? Прекрасно, с большой благодарностью. Нас прекрасно встретили, нас покормили, отнеслись с заботой, приютили. For those fleeing the war, Europe's poorest nation is also proving to be one of its most charitable. Up the road from the checkpoint, Hukari Estate would normally be making Moldova's primary export, wine. But not today. Workers from the vineyard are running a rest stop where Ukrainian refugees can get a helping hand. A waiter from the vineyard, Valariu, felt compelled to help those fleeing into his country. Пожалуйста, печеньки. Не стесняйтесь. Спасибо. Не за что. Смендру, пентру, сеньоре, остановимся, симфация, децара, настроимся, вечерял, мендру. Не именно не импост, но наш таком пуджат, фикса шаши я уеч. А дика, ну, на под сарамейка наша чаваса, сен темпла, але трудино, и сарамей интропарти снажут.
many of the refugees will eventually find their way to the Moldovan capital, Chisinau. The Manege Sports Stadium in the city centre is now a makeshift shelter. It's staffed by ordinary Moldovans, like volunteer Elena. When all this started, uh, I was afraid, uh, I, w I have anxiety. And when I, I started to help these people, I am feeling better. I'm not put in to decide to stop this work, but I can uh, make them to feel better in a little way. For volunteers, looking after the refugees means giving up more than just their free time. Elena tells us that everyone she knows is trying to help. Opening their homes to families, organising transport, and even bringing hot food to the shelter. I think that the Moldovan people are in a normal way because uh, we have to help our neighbours. Here in Moldova you can find hospitality and we've proved that. It's difficult for us but we have to manage it. We do it good, I think. But despite finding food, shelter and safety in Moldova, most Ukrainians aren't keen to stay. More than 200,000 refugees have already left Moldova. Most are headed to NATO countries like Romania, Poland and Germany. I think that now a lot of people are feeling unsafe. They left the country because they don't feel very safe here. Just in that moment when like, a regime like Putin will come here. Given Moldova's history with Russia, they are right to be scared. The Moldovan Republic is a young country, just 30 years old. In Moldova, the moment a people declared their independence. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the nation proclaimed its independence in August 1991 the same month that Ukraine did. Like Ukraine, Moldova is not a member of the European Union Fire! or NATO, leaving it vulnerable to Russian aggression. With Putin trying to re-establish Russia's borders with blood, former Soviet states like Moldova are on high alert. But would Putin really venture beyond Ukraine? Sadly, it's anybody's guess. But if history is any indication, his public regret about the dissolution of the Soviet Union might be an indication about his current actions. Politically, it's no man's land. Mihail Popsoy is the deputy speaker of the Moldovan parliament and a leader of the ruling party. His government has officially taken a neutral stance regarding the war. But Mihail is still worried about Putin. Nobody appears safe, not only in the immediate neighborhood, but given the saber rattling and even mentioning of the nuclear weapons is giving pause to quite a lot of people, even far beyond our immediate region. We try to think less of this immediate threat and concentrate on the challenge at hand at helping the Ukrainian refugees. We are also uh, facing a huge energy crisis, given that we are so dependent on Russian energy resources and the price went through the roof. We are doing our best to maintain the stability and uh, we're really counting on our good friends and partners in the European Union and uh, elsewhere to help us maintain the stability that is crucial for, for, for the political stability in, in Moldova and in the region. Moldova has been seeking stability for years. Mihail says it's taken nearly three decades to purge Soviet-era nepotism and corruption from Moldova's political and justice systems. Now, with war on its doorstep, Moldova has just applied for fast-track EU membership. When it comes to values, to identity, we are all Europeans. And we want to return to the European family of nations. The Moldovans have tasted freedom, have tasted democracy, and they don't want to give it back. 
And that is why also that we want to, to break away with our past, if you will, uh, with the past where we didn't have freedom, we didn't have democracy, we didn't have uh, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly. We want a much better future for ourselves and for, for our children. But attempts from ex-Soviet countries to build closer ties with the West have already enraged President Putin. Being part of the EU doesn't give you any security protection that I'm aware of. NATO does. Are you interested in joining NATO in, in, in getting that protection? Well, being a neutral country that is off the books, that is uh, not possible, much like uh, there are other European Union member countries that are neutral, Austria, Sweden, Finland. Uh, historically, the support for NATO membership in Moldova has oscillated between 20 and 30 percent, mm. as opposed to uh, joining the European Union uh, went as high as 70. The trouble is, with its neighbour at war and no official protection from the EU or NATO, Moldova is a sitting duck. What would be the Moldovan response if Russia did invade? Well, I don't really want to speculate. It's something that uh, uh, is a nightmare scenario and I wouldn't want to go there. But the frightening reality is that Putin's Russia is already here. Just one hour from the capital lies a Russian-backed rebel enclave in Moldovan territory. Wedged between Ukraine and the Nistra River is the breakaway Republic of Transnistria. The EU calls it a Russian-occupied territory. In 1991, just two days before Moldova officially left the Soviet Union, separatists in Transnistria declared their independence. With Moldova fighting to reclaim its territory and Moscow arming militia groups to keep the territory under pro-Russian control. After hundreds of deaths on both sides, a ceasefire was signed in 1992. 30 years later, the territory is home to 400,000 citizens and more than 1,000 Russian troops. Transnistria is often compared with Donbass in Ukraine, where Putin used the eight-year fight between Russian-backed separatists and the Ukrainian army as an excuse to invade the country. Many believe the very existence of Transnistria is a time bomb for Moldova. But not these guys. Are you Tim? Tim. Oh, great, Evan. Evan, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. Thanks for coming out. And you are? Simon. Simon, nice to meet you. You're from? Transnistria. Tr Transnistria, excellent, okay. So where are we here? We are officially in the DMZ. This is right between Moldova and Transnistria. And uh, Russian peacekeepers are stationed here. And uh, welcome. 15 years ago, Tim married a local and settled in Transnistria, also called Transdinista, because of where it sits on the Dniester River. Simon was born and raised there. Are they living in the next Donbass? It looks to the west similar, but it's actually vastly different. For one thing, Donbass is right on the border of Russia. They are 100% Russian. Uh, here, it's much more diversified. We had a war. We know about war more, and people uh, don't want to back in this period, and they want to live in a peace. Everyone who will, you will ask will say, like, a war is a bet. There's different sections that are Moldovan and different sections that are Transanistan. Everything just all blends together. On a tour of the neutral, demilitarized zone between Moldova and Transnistria, Tim and Simon continue to stress that unlike Donbass, both sides here coexist peacefully. Nobody wants any provocations. Everybody has family and friends in Moldova, family and friends in Ukraine. Nobody supports war. Nobody supports an invasion. Despite the sentiment, the truce feels uneasy. There's actually a tank, a Russian tank here. Checkpoints manned by Moldovan police and Russian soldiers stand at all main intersections. There's another Russian peacekeeper checkpoint because the bridge that they're protecting actually crosses into Transanista proper, which is out of the DMZ. Oh, we can't cross. Right. They have blockaded the road. 
with war in Ukraine, it's risky for foreign journalists to enter Transnistria. To get a look inside, we have to rely on locals. Tim has sent us this footage captured on his phone. The place is like a Soviet-era time capsule. Nothing in Transnistria changed after the war. In Moldova and in Ukraine, they tore down all the, the Soviet memorials and statues. But in Transnistria, they kept them. All the old Soviet Union memorials, the statues of Lenin, and even some of the infrastructure is still there intact as it was in the Soviet Union. The region presents like a mini Russia with poorer rural areas surrounding urban centers like the capital, Tiraspol. Transnistria has its own currency, a police force, even its own flag bearing the Soviet hammer and sickle. Tim's footage makes it unmistakably clear where the population's allegiances lie. Welcome to the old Soviet man caves in Tiraspol. So they've turned all their garages into man caves, Soviet man caves. And this is part of the Transanista tradition right here in Tiraspol. Last of the USSR. I'm with my brother, Alexander, who is the owner of the Soviet gun garage where he collects Soviet weapons from every war in history of the Soviet Union. Soviet Muha. It's an RPG-17 from the Soviet Union. He's going to show you how it works. Aim. Boom. Fire. And of course, it's tradition, we got to take a drink in the Soviet gun garage. So this is Simagonka, homemade vodka that they make themselves. That's the my brat. That's the my brat. My brother. Ah, that's about 80 proof. So uh, yeah, it burns going down. Take a little snack with it. But despite Alexander's interest in Soviet weapons, he does not want to see Putin's war push any further west. Transnistria is a peaceful country where everybody gets along, correct? Absolutely. But there's still the matter of an estimated 1,500 Russian soldiers illegally stationed here. People in Transnistria that don't fear Russia, they don't fear Russian troops. We have Russian troops here. Our Russian troops are actually our local boys with Russian passports, and they're guys like Simone. Believe me, I'm not scared of them at all. Um, they're good guys. So, would we fear Russian troops coming here? No, absolutely not. But uh, do we want any problems with the West or with Moldova? No, we want harmony, we want peace. But it's not up to the citizens of Transnistria. Putin has made it clear that he intends to reform at least parts of the Soviet Union. And having an army waiting in Transnistria is not helping calm Moldovan nerves. Transnistria. <laughs> Și dacă ei vor teritoriile ucrainei, s-ar putea să se vrei și teritoriile ocupate de dânșei Transnistria. Să nu zic un cuvânt urât de de Putin, de la Putin poți te aștepți de orice. Că e, e țară atacatoare. The Moldovan town of Krioleni lies directly on the border of Transnistria, and it's just 20 kilometers from Ukraine. So the war is close. Yeah. Când bombardează, când bombardează, se aude foarte tare, se aude. Mai ales când în prima zi când a fost escaladația asta, data 24, foarte tare s-a auzit. 
Residents of Criolini have their own war stories. For five months in the 90s, their town was the front line of the Transnistrian conflict. After living beside the enemy for 30 years, what will they do if Russia tries again? Именно избавить людей от этих страданий, от этого геноцида является основной, главной причиной, побудительным мотивом и целью военной операции, которую мы начали на Донбассе и на Украине. Putin unrelenting in his assault on Ukraine, it's difficult to know what comes next for neighboring Moldova. If trade routes to the east remain severed, the cost of living in Europe's poorest country will rise impossibly high. And if more Ukrainian cities are attacked, the refugees will keep coming. For Moldovans, all eyes are on the Ukrainian port city of Odessa, near its southern border. Its capture, or even a serious attack, would spell disaster. The extent of the humanitarian crisis that we, this would create in, in southern Ukraine, in Odessa region, according to UNHCR estimates, that that could lead to about a million refugees coming to Moldova in a matter of days, then uh, the humanitarian catastrophe is, is going to be of unimaginable proportions. Just as worryingly, Odessa's capture could give Putin a land corridor, stretching from Russia right up to Transnistria, linking up with Russian troops already there in Moldovan territory. If Putin doesn't stop, Average Moldovans like Elena are afraid it will mean the end of life as they know it. What would be lost in Moldova if there was a Russian Putin regime, a government here, a more pro-Russian government? What's at stake? Our identity, our future, European future, liberty, freedom, all these things we need to develop to go further. And now I'm such a reality that I don't imagine to live like people are living now in Russia. Uh, would you stay or would you leave? I was thinking about uh, it. Uh, if, uh, mm, mm, first of all, I was afraid. And after that, I decided that I will uh, fight for my country. And uh, if we'll have like Putin's regime here, I don't want to live in such a country. So I will leave, but I hope that this will not happen. So when you say you would fight for your country, what does fight mean? It's like Ukrainian woman take the gun and fight. Really? Yeah, because in a war, this is how things are going, no? So you would, you would take up a gun and try and fight Russian soldiers? Yeah, I think that it's normal that we local people to decide what we want for our country. This is normal. And when someone tries to uh, is trying to change this, you want to fight for your country, for your future. And this is what is happening now in Ukraine. All the people are fighting, even women. They are courageous sentiments. But as a tiny nation with half the population of Sydney, most agree Moldova wouldn't stand much of a chance against a Russian invasion. Our military power is very 
how to say it, we have a joke that Ukrainian farmers have more tanks than Moldova <laughs> right now. <laughs> more tanks than Moldovan army. <laughs> Pasha Parfini is a Moldovan celebrity. Over the past few years, he's had a dramatic transformation. This clip shows Pasha at the height of his fame, representing Moldova at Eurovision 2012 as Moldova's most loved pop idol. Now, he's one of the country's most visible social activists. He's using song to send a message to Russian soldiers. We have a uh, strong uh, call to action for Russian soldiers in the song, in the chorus. We remind them that there is someone who waited for them in their home. The best way to stay alive is to just to go home. And it's about that our truth is uncrushable somehow. The truth is uncrushable. Our truth is uncrushable, our cities uh, are uncrushable. Whatever the outcome of the war in Ukraine, Moldova will remain vulnerable. Moldova sadly has learned to live with this constant anxiety, with its security being threatened. There is some resilience that is uh, built in in the Moldovan society. Hopefully we can come to the end of this barbaric conflict as soon as possible and try to rebuild and try to come back to normal if that is ever possible.